eight months late. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this, but you know, mom life, training, COVID-19, Olympic postponement, wedding called off, just a whole bunch of everything going on. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a long time. Hopefully you all remember me. To my new peeps, hit the follow button. I'm gonna try to be consistent with this and get the content flowing, get some videos up here. We can't do nothing anyway, so I'm gonna try. But mom life is hard, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie. Now that we got that out the way, let's get into my birth story. I wrote notes down and I don't even know where the notes are because when it happened, I was like, oh my goodness. When I tell people this, they're not gonna believe me. But again, that was eight months ago and I don't even know where those notes are right now. So we're just gonna wing it. It was August 6th, 2019. I was 36 weeks and a day pregnant. And I'm gonna run y'all through the whole day. My actual birth was pretty fast. Before I get into August 6th, let me just say on August 5th, I went to practice and I ran eight 100s. I had my 36 week um, checkup at the doctor that I went in for that morning. I had an ultrasound, they told me everything was great. My cervix was checked for dilation, painful. Um, for my next children, I probably will opt not to be checked if I don't have to be checked. And hopefully at the end of the video, I'll remember to come back to that because there's something that, or I guess I could just say it now. I gave birth at 36 weeks in a day, so I was four weeks early. There were questions about why I possibly went into labor early and my doctor believes that it was possibly because my cervix is not short, but it's a little bit shorter than most, um, but my cervix was very stable throughout my pregnancy. Um, they did monitor it. I personally think being checked and having my cervix kind of agitated sent me into labor. I'm no doctor, I could be wrong. But anywho, the rest of my pregnancy was fairly easy. After I left the doctor's office, I ran a couple errands. I went to Hobby Lobby, I think I stopped at the grocery store, and then I came home to cook dinner. This was probably about 3 p.m. See, this is where I need to like go back to my notes. I remember I came home and I called my girlfriend, Amberly. We were college roommates. She ran track at South Carolina as well. She's also an OBGYN. She was also pregnant at the time. <laughs> so we were on the phone for probably about an hour and a half, two hours that day. So I started cooking dinner, went to the bathroom and noticed I was having what they call a bloody show. And so I called the doctor and I spoke to the nurse and the nurse told me that since I was checked that day, that, you know, that was normal. But if I were to soak through another um, panty liner to call back. So after that, I started having some cramps. To me, there were cramps. I was like, oh, I'm having Braxton Hicks. So I text my girlfriend, Jasmine. She's a mom of two. She was one of my go-tos while I was pregnant and also now as a new mom. And I just was like, hey, you know, I'm having some cramps. I also had a, a bloody show. Um, she was like, okay, would you like for me to come over? And I was like, Sure, okay, like I'm just having Braxton Hicks, like all right. So I text my mom, I text my son's father, and I'm saying son's father, I didn't know if I was having a boy or a girl because I did not want to know the sex of the baby. I wanted it to be a surprise. But I let everyone know like, yeah, so I'm having, you know, Braxton Hicks contractions, no big deal. Um, so my mom calls me, Liam's father calls me. Uh, at the time he was working in Pittsburgh. So, you know, I was, here alone and that's why my friend Jasmine offered to come over and I was like I'm fine everything's fine they're just Braxton Hicks I'm sure they're gonna stop I'm a month early like no we're good something I also text my friend Amberly and let her know like hey I'm having these cramps now or whatever she was in a meeting though I have this bright idea to download this app it's a contraction app basically to time the cramps and I actually still have the contractions on here so I started timing them honestly in the beginning I don't feel like it was that accurate because I would start it when a contraction would start and then I would forget to stop it the pain would go away and then I'll be like oh I haven't been in pain for a while let me stop so it wasn't quite accurate but anyway my friend gets over we're sitting in the living room talking and she's just like so um you know is your hospital bag packed do you have a birth plan I'm like yeah you know um my uh, hospital gown came in today I was gonna wash it she's like okay I'll go get it it was in the wash Room. We're watching TV and I was like, man, I gotta poop. And so she looks at me and she's like, okay, so you go in the bathroom and you try to poop and you can't poop. 
You just let me know, but don't force it, okay? And I'm like none the wiser. I'm like, okay. So I go to the bathroom, nothing. I forgot to mention I had a doula. I text her, I let her know that I was having these contractions. I was timing them and she's like, it's not possible. She also warned me that, you know, your first childbirth is usually the longest. And so she was like, you know, you could be in labor two, three days. And then I start feeling hot. And so I'm back on the couch, we're watching TV. I was cooking stew chicken, turn the pot off. My friend and I are talking. So I have a contraction. And when I have the contraction, I look down at my belly. I thought it was like his foot. And so I look down at my belly and I'm like, really? I'm having a contraction and you're gonna, no, I was like, I'm having a cramp. Cause I didn't know there were contractions. Like I'm having a cramp and you're gonna kick me while I'm having a cramp. And so my friend Jasmine comes and she comes in front of my belly and she's like, no, that's your stomach contracting around the baby. Like she literally saw the form of the baby <laughs> through my stomach and I was like, it's just a cramp. Like, what do you mean? So then I decide I'm gonna take a shower. I go get in the shower and somehow while I'm in the shower, the contractions start to get worse. As I said, Jasmine's like, you know, is your hospital bag packed? At this point, she's like, okay, I'm gonna put the hospital bag in the car. Jasmine was real slick and smooth about it. Like she was like preparing me without like alarming me. I had no idea. I was just like, yeah, my bag's over there. My birth plan, I couldn't find my birth plan. But by this point now, I noticed that the contractions are about three minutes apart. I let my doula know. Again, she tells me there's no way possible. Um, and I'm like, okay. Amberly calls me. My girlfriend, Dee Dee, also called. I'm again, none the wiser. Like, oh, I'm just having, um, cramps jasmine's talking to her on the side like she's about to have this baby <laughs> come over here Dee, Dee gets here at this point the contractions are strong enough that i'm now having to like sway and hum through them let me just tell y'all i ain't been to a lamaz class i was a month early so my doula didn't get a chance to to walk me through the birthing techniques that she wanted to walk me through but i watched enough youtube videos to know that i need to move and hum through my contractions. At least I think that's where I got it from, I don't know. Amberly calls me and um, she gets out of her meeting, so she calls me. She's like talking to me. She asked me something and I was like, hold on. And I was like, hmm. I had to hum through one. It stops and Amberly's like, Natasha, if you're in that kind of pain, I need you to go to the hospital. Okay. <laughs> I'm still none the wiser, like, okay, we're gonna go to the hospital. They're gonna stop my contractions. At this point now, I turn to Jasmine and I'm like, Amberly says I need to go to the hospital. Jasmine's like, okay, your hospital bag's already in the car, let's go. So we get in the car, Jasmine's like, we need to call your doctor and tell your doctor that you're on the way to the hospital. So Dee Dee tried to call. And of course the nurse has questions that like they're having to ask me that I'm finally like, just give me the phone. Like, yeah, so they're about, three minutes apart, we're headed to the hospital, I'm going to such and such hospital, you know, whatever questions they ask. And then they're like, what music do you wanna to listen to? And I'm just, oh, okay, whatever, we play this, we get to the hospital. So we get to the hospital, we had did like the hospital tour of like where the maternity ward is, where you're supposed to enter, what door you're supposed to go through, what button you're supposed to push, this, this, that. We get there and I'm like, no, it's the west entrance. <laughs> Jasmine knew it was the south entrance, but she was like, I'm not arguing with no pregnant lady in labor. <laughs> so we went to the west entrance for it to be the south entrance. So we make it over to the south entrance. I somehow left my purse with my ID in it because I did have it at one point and somehow that stayed. So anyway, Dee Dee comes in with me. We take the elevator up to maternity. Clearly they've like seen this all before because I walk in and they're like, okay, yeah, go back that way. Sign in with the lady. So the lady's asking me questions, signing me in. What's your name, date of birth, due date. And I, I get a contraction there. So then they take me to triage and it's a firefighter lady and a nurse. So at this point now the contractions are pretty strong. And again, I'm just thinking they're gonna send me home. So they asked me to change into a gown, pee into this cup. They hooked me up to the contraction monitor. I remember saying something like, you know, I don't know if these are contractions or if I'm being dramatic or, you know. If they're really contractions, I hope I'm not being dramatic because if this isn't the real thing. Uh, oh, no, you're definitely contracting. If these aren't contractions, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to handle the real thing. Some, something along those lines. And the nurse says, no, 
definitely contracting. The firefighter lady though, she's like, you're doing great though. Like I grabbed onto her and I'm like rocking back and forth through my contractions. So I go pee in the cup, come back out. <sighs> And um, they're like, okay, we're just waiting for your doctor to come in, the doctor that's on call. I go to like a group practice. I wanna say the practice has like six doctors. And so throughout your pregnancy, they try to have you see all of the doctors at the practice because whichever doctor is on call that night will be the doctor that delivers you. Well, it turned out that my OBGYN that I have been seeing since I moved to Austin was the one who delivered me, although I had not seen her at all through my pregnancy because I was trying to get through the rest of the doctors at the uh, office. She walks in and she's like, hey, so how's it going? All right, we're gonna check you. So to check my cervix again painful hate it and she's taking her gloves off and she's like okay so you're eight centimeters <laughs> I was a G, I was calm. I took it like a G. Like I said, I thought I was having Braxton Hicks. They gonna stop these contractions, send me home. I heard eight centimeters and I lost it. I literally lost it. I had changed, they changed me into this hospital gown. I was like, oh my God, I have to come out of this. Can I take this off? I'm so hot. I immediately just started sweating. And the fire firefighter lady there was there again. And I turned to her and I was like, I cannot do this without the epidural. Because that was the first thing that went through my mind that like, I'm eight centimeters, they're not gonna give me the epidural. And so she's like, you're doing great, it's fine. We're gonna get you admitted. We're gonna get you to your room. So the nurse comes in, who's now transferring me from triage to um, my labor and delivery room. At which point Dee Dee gets on the phone with my doula and she's like, uh, ma'am, your client's in labor. <laughs> she's eight centimeters. <laughs> so somehow my doula gets there. She was with another client and she was, I wanna say she was like 45 minutes away. I guess she made it there in like 20 minutes. And she gets there and she's like, this is not supposed to be happening. You're not supposed to be in labor. It shouldn't be happening this fast. On the walk over to, yes, the walk. The walk from triage to labor and delivery, which was probably all of 150 meters, but it was a walk. The nurse is like, are you sure you, you, you I mean, you could just do this natural and you'll be just fine. And I was like, no, I need the epidural. <laughs> you will not talk me out of this. When I initially interviewed my doula, that was one of the first things that I told her, like, look, I plan on getting the epidural. If you're here to talk me out of it, this interview is done. That's just a non-negotiable for me. Get me into my labor and delivery room. Jasmine and Dee Dee have my mom and his father on the phone. Uh, my girlfriend Erica makes it to the hospital with her daughter. My mom has my grandparents on the phone. They were all on FaceTime. Between going from triage to labor and delivery, I had like a split moment where I was like, I know I don't curse on here, but it's childbirth. I literally told myself, get your shit together. I told myself that because I knew that I had to stay in control. I didn't want to go crazy and, you know, put the baby in harm's way. I really, really, really didn't want to have a C-section. So I literally told myself to get my shit together. And so I, you know, went back to my rocking and humming through the contractions. Um, I had some talks with myself like, you done been to the Olympics, you a G, you got this. My doula gets there and she's like telling me like, you can totally do this. This is, you know, all about you. You don't need this epidural. I'm on team baby on that one. You'll be all right, you got this. But in answer to your question, second baby. But remember you've been doing it all day. You gotta get this one out first, yeah. <laughs> even be too late by the time you get the epidural you might not even feel it i'm still like f you where is the anesthesiologist i'm getting this epidural the part of the story that i'm leaving out though was i said that i had my 36 weeks check that day well that day i had my gbs swab done which i don't really know what gbs is i just know that it's something that if you are positive for it it's no big deal they just give you an antibiotic during your delivery so that you don't pass it to the baby. They had started the drip for it because I took the test that day, so my results weren't in. They started the drip for it because they started my IV over in triage, but they took the swab again. Um, so the nurse did that when they brought me into 
labor and delivery. Um, I had to wait about 30 minutes for the anesthesiologist. I will be honest, the contractions actually weren't that bad. What was bad was when the contractions were about 30 seconds apart because at that point I didn't have time to recover from the previous contraction. So there were like two or three contractions that I had and I was like, you know, I would rock through, I would hum, I would breathe. And when it was over, I was like, I may be able to do this without an epidural. And then as soon as I would say, I may be able to do this, the next one came <laughs> and I was like, nope. Where's the anesthesiologist? But the other thing, to be brutally honest, I did not want to know what it felt like for a baby to come through my vagina. I'm just keeping it 100. The cramps, contractions, whatever, I handled it. But that baby coming out, I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> She don't want no parts, I don't wanna know. I ended up getting the epidural. I was probably 10 centimeters when I got it. Honestly, I think the only reason why I did get the epidural was because they had to slow my labor down. We didn't have the GBS results and they didn't want me to have the baby without having those results. This was about nine o'clock that I had gotten to labor and delivery room. When they took the swab, they said it could take up to four hours to get the results back. So the nurse was like, you know, at, at this point now it's like, so when is the baby coming? Cause the baby's definitely coming. So is it gonna be an August 6th baby or an August 7th baby? Take the swab and the nurse is like, well, it takes about four hours for, for us to get these results. So I think the baby is gonna be an August 7th baby. The nurse wasn't really that nice if I'm totally honest. And the nurse was like, you know, you're gonna have to keep still when you get this epidural you're gonna have to keep still because they're gonna put a needle in your back. So I'm rocking, I'm swaying, I'm working through these contractions. You also get the epidural while you're on a contraction. That doctor came in there to give me that epidural and he was like, okay, I need you to arch your back and I need you to stay still. I was never more still in my life. <laughs> like stick me and then you know they say that or at least they said that it was going to take a while and i might not feel the effects of it you know i may push and still feel it and i got that epidural and i was like listen it really wasn't that bad but i don't see why anybody would do this without it i'm sorry <laughs> Like, I was talking to my mom now, talking to his father, like, you know, all is well. I called my best friend like, hey, I need you to go to the house. There's some stewed chicken on the stove. If you wanna have that, you can have some. But my dog is at the house by herself. Can you let her out? Can you, and, and he's like, Tosh, like, did you just tell me you're in labor and you're like just having like this casual conversation with me? And I'm like, yeah, like, you want some chicken? You know, it's on the stove. Go have some, put it away for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny now that I'm thinking about it, but I was like, why would anyone do this without? Like, I don't understand. So literally within like 30 minutes, <laughs> the nurse comes in and she's like, so we have your test results, it's negative. The doctor comes in and she's like, okay, we're gonna break your water, we're gonna have this baby. So they stopped the penicillin for the GBS. The doctor is like, putting on this protective gear, like it was crazy. She goes in, breaks my water, and then they're like holding my legs up, telling me to push. I know I pushed for about 22 minutes. I felt the pressure, but I didn't feel like, there was one moment that was scary, that they gave me um, an oxygen mask. That was another moment where I was like, get your shit together. In my mind, the nurse gave me the oxygen mask. I'm like, oh no, something is wrong. But I was like, stay calm. Cause if you start to panic, it's gonna affect the baby. Just push, get the baby out. Like just stay focused. After the fact, my doula was like, no, that's to totally normal. That's what they do in childbirth because when you're pushing, you're exerting a lot of energy. So the oxygen is just another boost of energy wasn't that anything was wrong at all. She was like, that's my bad. I should have told you that, but we didn't, everything happened so fast. I didn't get a chance to like prep you on that possibly happening. So I pushed for 22 minutes. He came right on out. I caught him. <laughs> I'm sure that my doctor made sure that everything was okay and made me think that I was catching him, but I caught him and we held the baby up. Dad was supposed to say, it's a boy, it's a girl, but he was, a little bit too emotional to say it. So 
I think someone else in the room ended up saying it. And then my girlfriend Erica cut the umbilical cord. And that is my birth story. Liam was born August 6, 2019 at 11.35 p.m. He weighed five pounds, seven ounces. I think he was about 18 inches. He was a little guy. 23.35. Um, but he came out nice and healthy. He was a month early, but no NICU time. We stayed in the hospital for two days. Yeah, we, we came home pretty quickly. Rolled me over to um, recovery. So you go from labor and delivery to the nursery ward. While they were rolling me over, the nurses were like, listen, you can come back anytime you wanna have a baby. But they were like, but the next time, the first eh of pain that you feel, come right up here because that next baby is gonna slide right out of you. <laughs> I was like, okay. That's the story. I had no idea that I was in labor. Um, I thought I was just having Braxton Hicks. If my girlfriend Amberly did not tell me to go to the doctor or go to the hospital rather, I might've had him on the couch. So thanks Amberly. And actually, hopefully the next baby Amberly delivers my baby. But that's another story for another day. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I will try my best to be consistent and get some more content going on this page. We'll try to keep each other entertained during this pandemic. We'll get some workouts going and then just let me know what you wanna know, what you wanna hear. Um, Liam's asleep right now, but I'm sure he'll make his debut. Um, yeah, so subscribe, comment, like, all of the above, and I'll see you next time. Well, I guess this is life now.